Hi, good morning. Welcome or welcome back to Crumbs and Corkscrews. And this is where I, Lou, the dessert obsessed baker, share with you my deliciously easy desserts. And that's cakes, bakes, puddings, anything sweet, you name it. I'm going to share it with you. And here, every Sunday morning, live on Facebook and YouTube, we have a baking, a, a live baking class. <laughs> so if you're joining us today or if you're watching on a replay, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe buttons. And also, if you hit the notifications, Facebook and YouTube will let you know next time I go live. So you're never going to miss an episode. And the best thing is, is autumn's here. It's coming this week. And yes, we're on the countdown. There is so many amazing baking opportunities over the next couple of months before we get to the magical C word. So you're going to want to stick around because I've got some amazing, if I say so myself, recipes coming up. I am so excited. I love this time of year for baking. But today... We're going to be starting with our autumn baking and you guys have been voting over on the channels to tell me what is your favourite autumn flavour. I thought it was going to be pumpkin spice, but actually it's not. It's something sweet, it's something sticky and it's a good old classic and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making a sticky toffee cake. I'm so excited for this. I love sticky toffee pudding and getting it into a cake. But we've got 10 seconds before we get stuck in. Let's get everybody together. And if you're here on the live or you're here on the replay, don't forget to drop me a hi in the comments. And let me know where you're joining from. And if you've got any questions, if you pop them down below as well, then I'll answer them as we go through. Or if I can't do it whilst we're, we're, we're baking, I'll come back to you as soon as possible afterwards. And of course, I pop all those questions into the blog post as well. But as it says, it's time to get started. So let's go. Oh dear. Right. We're in. <laughs> Happy Sunday. I put out this morning on the on the channels reminding people that were here that it was grey and dull and dreary. Well, it was when I looked out. The sun did actually pop up a little bit earlier. Um and I thought, oh, we're in for a bit more sun now, but actually it's gone grey again. But I hope if you're joining us and it's Sunday morning, you've got your PJs, you've got a good cup of tea, you're curled up on the sofa and you're ready to get stuck in. Um, this kitchen is going to come autumn smelling sweet and all those lovely flavours shortly. I am so excited for this one. So um, let's not beat around the brush. Let's get stuck in. What are we making well, we're making sticky toffee pudding cake. So if you don't know what sticky toffee pudding is, or you might know a sticky date pudding, it is pretty much a classic dessert, baked dessert, which is really sweet and sticky and caramelly, and it's full of dates as well, which give a really sweet um, like flavour to it. Um, here in the UK, sticky toffee pudding is pretty much on every sort of pub dessert menu and it's always my go-to i absolutely love it um if you ask custard ice cream or cream i'm afraid it's the lot the lot and lots of caramel sauce to go with it as well but what we're going to be doing is we're not going to be making this as a pudding we're going to be making it as a cake today and we're going to be making it as a bundt cake that really nice round sort of cake the ring cake, and then we're going to be pouring over a lovely sticky toffee drizzle that we're going to make as well. So, so exciting. I'm making a small bunt. Um, as you guys will know, I it's just Ian and I, so I'm not making a large bunt cake. We're going to be making a sort of a seven inch diameter cake, and then that's going to serve about eight to 10 slices, maybe 12 slices, depending on what how big you, uh, you cut them. But it is easy to scale this recipe up and all that information will be in the blog post as well. Um, you can make this as well. If you don't want to make it as a bunt cake, you can make it as a layer cake. Um, so you can sandwich the layers together, maybe with some caramel buttercream or something. Or you can just make it as a 
a single cake and then poke lots of holes in for you to drizzle this uh, uh, toffee sauce all over the top. And talking of that sauce, it is the easiest. It's not a caramel sauce or anything. It is a sticky toffee sauce and it is the simplest to do. And we're going to be doing that whilst the cake is in the oven. And as always, it's always really quick and easy to make. So um, this is a good one. There's not too much time <laughs> sort of to get everything together and into the oven. So uh, it is a good one. Uh, and again, it's perfect. I mean, you guys voted for it. It was your favorite autumn flavor. It is perfect for this time of the year. And actually autumn starts on Tuesday as well as Bake Off here in the UK. I think the States are getting it towards the end of the week as well. Um, so, you know, everything is happening this week. Strictly started yesterday, Bake Off, Autumn, all sorts. So this is the perfect cake. Anyway, we need to get started with the ingredients. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down these, but I'm going to pick one out first because we need to get them soaking. And that is the dates. So dates are included in the sticky toffee because they're really high sugar content and it helps keep that case really nice and moist. And as they cook and they break down, those sugars release and that's what gives the stickiness and helps create that really dense, um, not dense, that really sweet sticky sort of texture of your sticky toffee pudding, but in this case, a cake. Uh, and these need to be pitted and uh, then roughly chopped. Now, you can buy the dates with uh, the stones in the... Um, what you want to do is remove those before you weigh them out. The 100 grams of the pitted dates here are obviously without the stones. And you can buy them whole and then you can chop them yourselves. Or if you're just feeling you don't want to do that, you can buy chopped dates as well. But you want 100 grams of these. So what's going to happen with those then is I've just been brewing it. You're going to want 150 mils of black tea. So I've just uh, boiled this. This is freshly boiled and I've just been steeping the tea leaves in here. You can use a tea bag if you prefer. If you don't want to use tea, just use regular uh, boiled water straight over. And with our dates, we're just going to pour that over the top. And that's going to soften them up. It's going to start releasing those sugars. So when we incorporate them into our cake batter, they're going to get all really nice and moist. Some people suggest you puree them. I find then they get just too wet. We want a little bit of texture from our dates. So these need to soak for about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to pop them to the side. And by the time we get to adding them, they'll be perfect. The amount of tea or water you add is important. You don't want to be adding more than that because we'll be adding that into the cake batter and that will make our cake batter too runny, too less, too little, sorry, and you, your dates won't soak enough and absorb the water and the sugar and they'll still be dry so you won't get the stickiness. So we're just going to pop those to one side. I'm just going to grab a sip, sorry. Throat this morning, <laughs> a little tickly. Ah, autumn's on the way. <laughs> okay, let's get back into the rest of our ingredients then, whilst our date soak. So, you're also going to want um, some butter. We've got unsalted here, you can use slightly salted if you prefer. Um, 100 grams of that. We're using self raising flour today. Um, this is kindly sent to me to try out by Allison's Flour, so that's why I'm using this. Um, if you're unable to get self-raising flour, you can use plain or all-purpose flour, but you'll want um, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder added to it as well. But we're using self-raising today. This already has its raising agents added, so that's why there's no additional baking powder on the ingredients list. The dates and the tea we've talked about. Now, we're going to be using as well two sugars and this is also going to give it that rich toffee sticky 
oozy sort of all the really lovely really deep rich flavor that you want from a sticky toffee pudding or a sticky toffee cake we're not using any treacle here the same as there's no margarine it's full fat butter uh when using muscovado sugars i've got a light muscovado in here and a dark muscovado as well and they're going to bring that really round body flavor to our cake you don't want to be using white sugar it's just not going to give you all those lovely flavors and we're using a split so i've got a uh 100 grams of dark muscovado and 50 grams of light muscovado. So we'll get that really deep color as well when we bake it. So there are two sugars. Also going to need a little bit of golden syrup. Now I said we're not using treacle. We're not using treacle at all. We're using the muscovado sugar. But the golden syrup, again, it helps. With this cake, it's a slightly different texture to just being a regular sponge cake. It's more sort of muffiny sort of texture. And so the golden syrup adds a bit more sugar. Yes, we've got the dates. We've got the sugars. And we're going to add some more sugar with just a tablespoon of golden syrup. If you can't get golden syrup, like a light corn syrup, I think they call it in the States. So I want a tablespoon of golden syrup. You'll need a couple of eggs, just two a today. And we, I did say we're not adding any baking powder, but we are adding a little bit of baking soda. And that's just because it's quite a wet mixture with those dates in. Um, yes, we've got the flour, but the bicarb as well is working. The baking soda or bicarbonate soda is working with the raising agents in our self-raising flour just to help lift because it's quite a, den uh, quite a wet mixture. Just a little bit of extra lift there, but not baking powder. That would be too much. And I've also got in here a teaspoon of mixed spice. That's just going to bring all that sort of uh, that little warmth to our uh, sticky toffee pudding with all the sugars. And you're also going to need um, a dash of vanilla extract, a teaspoon, but we'll just give it a pour. <laughs> Uh, just for us to remember, these are dates. These are how my dates arrived. So they are just dried. Well, they're not completely dry. They're partially dry. They are the fruit of the date palm. They're not a prune. You can't use a prune here. Prunes do not have enough sugar and they are dried plums. Uh, so you'll find them in the baking aisle or the dried goods aisle, but they are quite sticky when you handle them, hence also why it's really good to soak them. So these were pitted ones that I bought. So that's what your date looked like when you purchased them. So for then the toffee drizzle, we'll get on to that later, but we'll need double cream, unsalted butter, a little bit more muscovado and another tablespoon of golden syrup. Now I didn't have room to put the equipment on here, so I'm just going to go back to the here and I can show you our equipment. We're going to be doing all of this in one bowl. Um, so just, it is a one bowl mix really, apart from obviously soaking the dates in another bowl. Um, but it's nice and simple. I'm going to be using, uh, the handheld mixer today rather than the stand mixer. Um, just because it's quite a wet, it's quite a wet mixture. We're going to be melting our butter as well. So haven't got to worry about creaming the butter and the sugar together. So a handheld mixer is perfect. Um, but to bake our cakes in, we're going to be making it, like I said, in a bump pan. And this is my little seven inch that I use pretty much for everything. I bought this years ago. It must nearly be 10 years old. It's still really good condition. I bought this in Aldi for like £2.99. Um, it was a middle aisle by, <laughs> we love the Aldi middle by aisle, um, but it's got a slightly non-stick coating, but I will um, coat this with some cake release as well. But it's the perfect size for two people or just a small gathering. This um, is my one of my larger Nordic wear tins, which you see has got all these beautiful um, ornate. I think this is the cathedral one. Um, and as you can see inside, it's all really ornate. This is, I think it's a stick. 
six cup it might even be an eight cup pan um and it's just too big for the two of us at the moment but uh, i will be doing something in this later in the year closer to christmas because these are beautiful um but if you want to you can use your nordic wear ones remember when we talk about doing the pans you really need to make sure these are really well greased um so you can get your cake out of those but we're going to be using the little trusty Aldi one today. <laughs> so let's just pop that to one side. There we go. It is stunning though. And you can get them on e Amazon, eBay. They are expensive, but they're so worth it. And if you're in the UK, you've TK Maxx, um, HomeSense stock them as well. And you can get a real good bargain. That one, I think, normally is around 40 to 50 pound. And I picked it up for 20 pound in HomeSense, which is part of TK Maxx, TJ Maxx, depending on where you are in the world. So, um, yeah, you'll need your bowl, your bump pan, your handheld mixer, obviously, your, as usual, a selection of. Um, spatulas and spoons and things and I mentioned it briefly but we're going to be using uh, cake release to um, coat our bunt pan in and this is the homemade cake release that I make and you'll be able to find that over on the blog and I will link to that I always link to that in my bunt cake recipes so uh, this stuff is amazing okay enough of that I guess we should get stuck in so uh, first things first, if you're doing this at home, preheat your oven to 180 degrees C or 350 Fahrenheit, because I'm going to talk you through and I don't want the oven to be on for ages. I'm going to preheat that a little bit closer to when we're ready to get this in the oven. But if you're doing this at home, pre start preheating it now, 180, 350. So like I say, the first thing we were going to do is and is get your dates on to soak. And you'll see as they soak, the colour of your liquid is almost like your toffee sauce. Um, and your dates sort of start to really soften up. So we'll just leave that to one side. Next thing you're going to want to do is melt your butter. Now you can do this in the microwave. I'm just going to do it quickly on the hob today because we're going to be using the saucepan as well for making our toffee drizzle. So in here, I have 100 grams of unsalted butter. It's at room temperature. We are going to be melting it. So if you've just taken it straight out the fridge, don't panic. So let's just pop this on here. Oh, on the front. And just let that do its Thing for a moment. So whilst that's melting, our dates are soaking into our large mixing bowl. We're going to go then. Let's just get the handheld mixer. And first up, we're going to be whisking together our eggs, our sugar, and our golden syrup. And like I said, we're not creaming the butter and sugar with this recipe that hence obviously we're melting the butter um, but we're going to whisk those up the eggs and the sugar into a really nice frothy pale lovely sweet mixture so in with our eggs first I'm going to want to put the shell in there so hopefully it doesn't go rolling around in one and these also as always are at room temperature some places I keep my eggs in the fridge. I know a lot of people here in the UK don't, but if you do keep your eggs in the fridge, you'll have to keep them chilled. Then you'll want to make sure you bring them up to room temperature to start with. And that's because if they're too cold and you start to whisk them, the proteins, strands, as you're whisking the eggs and the egg whites, won't start breaking and sort of coming apart. And so we can and stretching so when the cake bakes it rises so you want them to be room temperature it's a lot easier to whisk up and you'll notice that because they're at room temperature and like i said with the protein strands you'll get a really thick frothy aerated um egg eggy mixture whatever you put in there hold on let's just we can hear the butter starting to it's almost melted so just a moment more 
So that's our two eggs. We're going to go in with our sugars. So that's 50 grams of light muscovado. 100, and 100 grams of dark muscovado. Now, by all means, you can do 100, 150 of the dark if you prefer, rather than the split. I do like to have a little bit of the split. That's our butter. There we go. So that's our sugars with our eggs. And then finally, we're going to want a tablespoon of golden syrup. Now, I don't use a measuring spoon for this because unless you've got golden syrup in the squeezy bottle, it's just a nightmare. So I'm just going to roughly gauge it with my spoon. We're going to want that again a little later so let's give that a scrape down oh, i can't believe it's autumn on uh, tuesday here in the uk 22nd of september it is also Day one, week one of the Bake Off is back. I'm so excited. I don't watch much religiously on telly, but Bake Off is one of those things. Many years ago when I stopped with the shop and before I really got back into the blog, I just I couldn't watch it. It was too much cake. I was tired out of cake, but now I really enjoy watching it. And I love Noel Fielding as well as Matt Lucas <laughs> and Prue Leaf. And of course... Mr. Hollywood. But hey, it's back this week. So um, we won't be giving any spoilers away each week. But uh, if you guys want to talk about Bake Off, then I'm more than happy to. And first week back is usually cake. Um, so it'll be a good week. Hopefully we get to meet all the new bakers. It's so exciting. Anyway, our eggs, our sugar and our golden syrup are in here. So we're just going to give that a whisk up. Oh, Now, dark muscovado and muscovado sugar in general is really quite um, soft and moist. So you might find as you're whisking that it's quite, you get some lumps. Um, you can break them up as I'm doing here with my handheld whisk. But you can also, I've got, I've got a couple of large lumps there if anybody heard any of that. So um, before I continue, I'm just going to give them a prod with my spatula. As you can see, it's nice and frothy. It's taken that really, everything that we're doing here with the, with the dates, with the sugars, with melting the butter as well, is going to help to give us that really classic sticky toffee, really rich, color that we we associate with a sticky toffee pudding in our cake so just give it a whisk up and you'll notice that it becomes about as that air is incorporated into the eggs it sort of doubles in volume with our egg mixture i'm just gonna make sure the sugar is really well combined in there There we go. And I say this is quite a, a few spots, spots around. It's quite a wet mixture. So don't panic if it feels really, really sort of wet. This is nice and thick and frothy. I'm just checking out the butter, not the butter, the um, sugar. So next up, it smells so good already. And that's those muscovado sugars. They are immense. They're, um, I love using Billington's um, sugars. They are just perfect for baking, in my opinion. So 
I've got our melted butter here. That's a little warm on the bottom, so I'm not going to put it straight on here. And I'm going to grab my mixer and just on a low, like some number one, I'm going to gradually add the butter. Whisking all the time. Just going to pop the, this back on the back. We're going to use the same pan for our sauce. And because we've only melted butter in there, it's perfect because that's all we're going to be doing again. So we've just added the butter. We'll just give this another whisk up a little bit higher this time. that smells it smells like autumn it smells like sticky toffee i'm so excited um so we've added a whisk our eggs our sugar and our golden syrup we've added our melted butter we're now going to not actually use the handheld mixer anymore because we're going to be adding the dates now and we don't want to use the mixer because the mixer could potentially destroy the dates and that's not what we we're after not with this like I say so as you can see I've got this lovely sort of liquor here and the soft dates and I'm just gonna add oh that in now I said you don't need all the liquid that I'm gonna add I'm not gonna add we're gonna see And you'll actually notice that when you do this, you probably find, like, you know, when you get um, melted sugar and sugar syrups, you might even see some of the sugar residue out on your bowl. I'm just not going to add, oh, there's quite a bit of liquid that didn't get absorbed there, so I'm not adding that in. And we're also going to give it a splash, so about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, or a little bit more in my case. <laughs> and then just with your spatula, fold that all through. Say, so we're not going mad with this. It's, it is a wet mixture. But we're now ready. for our last ingredient. I mean, how simple is that? That's been 10 minutes, I think, if so, to get to that point. Um, so now you want your flour and your baking powder and your mixed spice. So this is 165 grams of self-raising flour. This has already been sifted. So actually, before I pop it in, I'm going to add both of those into there. And what I'm just going to do is just fold those through. You can sift them together, and I normally would, but because I wanted to show you them separately. And then, so this is our flour, our baking soda, but or bicarbonate soda, and our mix spice. And we're just going to pop that in. And fold everything together so don't forget you've got the dates in there as well I'm using self-raising flour you can use plain flour or all-purpose flour if you prefer you'll just want to add an extra teaspoon and a half of baking powder into the mix Like I say, it's a runny mixture. We've got that butter, that sugar, that um, 
uh, those dates that have been soaking. We've used melted butter. What you want to do is make sure that everything is incorporated off the bottom of your bowl as well. So it's more like a muffin mix. It's quite wet. It's quite liquid. It's not like a cake mix that we'd know where it's we've creamed the butter and the sugar together. So it smells amazing. I really can't wait for this. There we go. Right. So just going to pop that to one side because we're going to sort the bump pan out. But first off, we're going to, um, you'll have done this before you got here, but I'm going to preheat my oven now. So by the time we get to putting it in, it'll be up to temperature. So we're looking at, oh, you can't see me, I'll just go off camera there. Um, but hopefully you should still be able to hear me with the new mic. I want 180 degrees C or 350 Fahrenheit. So that's going to take about five minutes. By the time we've gone through the bump pan and everything, it'll be up to temperature. So then, um, two things. We're going to be making this in our bump pan. And we're going to be... I don't normally do this for regular cakes because I have nice deep-sided cake pans and we know where we're filling to and it's not going to come over the top. But with a bunt pan, we don't want to be filling three quarters full or any like a quarter full. You know, it's not a layer cake or anything because we want it to come up the side. So it does run the risk of piling over the top. So always bake your bunts on a baking tray you don't want to be getting it all over the interior of your oven that you've then got to clean and scrape down and it's it's just a nightmare so do this also on a baking sheet and you'll see lots of different people suggesting lots of different things for making bump pans some people say you should uh, coat the entire pan inside with melted butter and then um, sift like a layer of flour over the top it'll help stop it sticking and it does help stop it sticking but when you turn it out you'll find that you've got baked flour all on the edges of your <laughs> bunt pan uh, on your bunt cake um as it as it sort of comes away from the size of the bunt pan you can use um baking sprays uh and cake release that you can get from the supermarket however they are really expensive. A little aerosol doesn't last you that long. It's also not a good planet. It's an aerosol. It's going to cost you anywhere between five and ten pounds. Um, cake release in the ones that I've seen is about ten pounds for a bottle. Um, and you can actually make it yourself very easy at home. It is literally oil, flour and vegetable shortening. And this is what this is. This is what I need to make a new pot. Uh, but this is our um, cake release. And you can, you've got flour in your cupboard. You've probably got oil. It's just vegetable oil. The only thing you probably don't have is vegetable shortening. In the UK, it's called Trex, or you can, it's called Crisco, I think, in the States. You can get lots of different varieties over there. But the best thing about that is you can buy a block for like 50 to P to a pound take what you need and freeze the rest. So you've always got it in. And then when you want to make another batch, you just take a bit off and you pop the rest back in the freezer again. Uh, so, um, and like I say, so it's going to cost you about a pound if you've got oil and flour already at home. And it is just the same. I need to get a new seal for this uh, uh, kiln jar. But it is just the same as the stuff in a tub. As you can see there, it's just white thick and white and it lasts for ages um, it doesn't go off you can keep it in the fridge you can keep it in the cupboard at room temperature um, but it doesn't go off at all and you'd apply it just as you apply a, a normal cake release so I'm using a silicon pastry brush here and I'm just loading up, but not too much. We don't want too much on there. And I'm just going at the moment to start with round the patterned side of my bunt pan. Now, this is a non-stick bunt pan, um, but 
even still, because it's got the pattern and all those bits and pieces on it, you never know what's going to happen if it's going to stick. So I don't run the risk. I always uh, sort of coat my bump pan with some cake release. Um, yeah, and like I say, it's we're just using a vegetable oil when we do it. We're not using olive oil or rapeseed oil or anything like that because they do have a distinct flavour um, which will you can taint your cake. So use just a vegetable or a sunflower oil. So once you've done the outer side, don't forget to do the center core. I'm just, yep, there we go. I can't believe how quickly this, this cake has gone this morning. It's great. That's how amazing it is. So, right, we've got our bump pan. Don't forget to do just the edges, just in case you have a little overflow there. Let's get rid of that one. And that's our cake release. And that has lasted. I refilled this. So that's lasted another six months. One of these will last me six months, but I'm doing a lot of baking. So uh, there we go. Right. We have our bunt pan. We have our now nicely our sticky toffee cake mix and we're just gonna pour this in here and when you're filling bunt pans you want to fill them no more than about two-thirds full and that will help obviously with the um it not overflowing on the top oops got a little bit down the side there when I saw this in the bowl, I thought, oh, I think I've got too much again. I'm actually probably not going to put all of that in. And what we'll do with that is we'll just make a couple of cupcakes or something with those. All right, I've got, let me just, cake everywhere. Actually, I know what I'm going to do with that. I've just had a really good thought. Anyway, <laughs> let's get rid of the stickiness first. So this here then is um, about two thirds full in the bunt pan. I'm not going to tip it up because it is quite a wet mixture, so it will run. But it's sitting about an inch below the top rim of our bunt pan there. So that is actually ready to go in. With what I've got left over... She says, looking for a dish to, where's that gone? I have some little pudding dishes. Oh, somebody's been at my pudding dishes. This, it's like Goldilocks. I'm going to not take one out the... We'll have to use one of the shallow dishes. Let me just give this a quick wash up here in this water. It's only had the butter in. But what you can do with this is rather than, um, you could make cupcakes if you wanted to. Um, you don't have to, but I'm gonna make like a little toffee pudding in a pudding dish, little toffee pudding cake um here so i've just washed um and dried a, a ceramic pudding dish this i think might have had like a fish pie in it or something and again with my cake release this is i'm just gonna it's not that this one i'm gonna release from here but I don't want it too sticky on the sides, but I'm just gonna grease up that. There we go. And with what I've got left here, I'm just gonna 
Kurve ein. Oops. Always get thumbs and fingers when I try and do this with this this bowl. I had two of these. I literally picked one up in the cupboard the other week and it smashed everywhere. And can I find a nice large Pyrex bowl anymore? No. Can't find one at all. Right, I'm just gonna then just scrape that down. And let's move that out of the way. Okay then. So, just fingers. We have our bundt cake to go in. It's about two thirds full. I've also got the little one as well. So let's have a look at the oven. Yes, that's preheated. So that's preheated to 180 degrees C, 350, and I'm gonna pop that in on the baking sheet. And we're gonna cook for 40 to 45 minutes for the large one. Um, so, and our little one will probably take about 20. So I'm gonna split the difference there on the, not split the difference, that's wrong. I'm gonna split that total duration time down to 20 minutes for the little one. I can check that one and check the big one, see if I need to reposition it in the oven and then bake it for the final duration and things. So they're in, as you can see, fingers crossed. Excited about these. Uh, let me just get my cloth, wipe up my sticky spills. So, I mean, how, how simple was that, guys? It was, there was no creaming the butter and the sugar. The only whisking was our eggs and our sugar and our golden syrup and when we added the melted butter. And the rest of it was all folded in. And it's great. You could do this one again, like I say, with all of them. It is super easy. You can do it with the kids as well. Just any of the hot bits like the melting butter and the hot tea for the soaked dates. Just, you know, supervise or do those instead yourselves. But let them do the folding and the mixing and all of that really good stuff. So finally then, these are going to be in the oven now. So they're not going to come out whilst we're on camera. But I will, as always, show you them later. But we're going to make our little sticky toffee a drizzle. So... I need just to get some double cream from the fridge. And we don't need that, but let's take this and that. And what have I got here? Some scales, <laughs> because we're gonna do some measuring out. So then I'm just going to pop back so I can reacquaint myself. So I've got them written down in front of me, but I need to make sure I'm telling you exactly the right thing as well. So for our sticky toffee drizzle, this is that really lovely toffee sauce that you'll get over the top of your sticky toffee pudding. Um, and it, it's to die for. And it is really super easy as well. Um, we're going to be using just four ingredients. We're going to be using some double cream or heavy cream. Uh, there we've got, we're also going to be using a little bit of unsalted butter again. Um, we're going to be using our dark muscovado sugar, just like we had for our, um, for our cake. And we're also going to be using a little bit of golden syrup. We don't need any more dates. So I'm just going to get rid of them. And we don't need any more vanilla extract. So let's, let's take them out of the picture then. So let's go back to... Um, you can see everything going on. Um, I'm just going to use the same saucepan that I melted my butter in. I'm just going to be melting butter in it again, um, so I don't necessarily need to wash it up. Um, but, and all you're going to do is you're going to add everything in and let it melt, and then you simmer for about five minutes until it's thick, and then you allow it to cool. So whilst that's simmering, I'll run back through the recipe and the ingredients for you and um, tell you what happens when everything comes out. Uh, and by that time, we'll have a look at that and then we'll, we'll, be, we'll be ready. Though. I mean, well, well, 
we'll be ready to have a cup of tea and the cake will still be in the oven. So then let's start off with our butter. And let's say you want about 15 grams of, un let's get the right one. I did measure this out earlier. So that's right in that goes. You're going to want then, what did I say? I can't remember now. Uh, 40 grams of muscovado sugar. And again, I'm using dark muscovado here. For that really toffee richness. There we go. Then you're going to want your double cream and we've got 50 mils of double cream. So just gonna pour. We're not gonna pour, it doesn't wanna pour today. Let me get a fresh spoon. It's cause it's really thick. Did I get the extra thick? No, I just got double cream. Okay, so we want 50 mils there. There we go. And then, and I've used my golden syrup spoon elsewhere. So we want teaspoons here, we want two teaspoons of a golden syrup. So once again, should have just left the lid off this, shouldn't I? If you've got a squeezy one, you know, go for that. And I'm going to use my spatula, there's one. We don't need as much this time. So quite a bit on the back of that one. I love golden syrup. It's so good. Two. Right. And that's everything in there. So this now is just going to go onto the hob uh, to melt everything together and then simmer. So let's just get that started, shall we? So it's on like a medium, we're not boiling this, we're not doing anything to make it like, we don't want it to turn crystallize or become too, we're not looking to make like a hard caramel or anything, we're just making a lovely toffee caramel sauce. So as you start off, just give it a, a stir together. And it will start melting down pretty quickly, especially with that cream. And you're best doing anything like this if you've got them in heavy bottomed pans that will just make everything, it's just easier for it, the heat distribution, especially if you're working with sugars or cream and things which we are so I don't want to I'm trying not to stand in front of, I should have got my little hob out today but with having actually despite the fact it being quick and easy and only in one bowl I seem to have quite a lot of things carrying on over there right that looks like it's almost melted together just going to give it a stir, make sure all that sugar is broken up. Just going to find something to rest. There's a clean one. My spatula on. And I say, this is going to simmer. We don't want it to boil, so we're not looking for a just 
just looking for that gen. Right, there I go. I can see it. Just pop that there. I'm just going to turn that down so it's not so furious. Okay. And then once that's cool, what we'll do as normal is we will just pop it into a bowl and then a piece of cling film over the top to stop a skin forming on top of that. So I'm just going to pop my bowl in the sink. We can get that washed up as well. So um, if you're just joining us, we have in the oven, we have a sticky toffee bundt cake. Um, and on the hob, we have a sticky toffee drizzle. Uh, Thank you. And please, can you fix that at some point soon? I can smell those cakes. I can see them as well. They look, they look so good. So, like I say, this is going to thicken up. Um, so, I was going to recap it whilst this is doing it, but it does look like this one's going to possibly not take that long to do. So I've got my bowl and I'll get my cling film out. Let's get rid of the scales. We don't need them any more. Let's just pop that back in the fridge. Got, uh, bits and pieces. It's actually I feel quite calm for a Sunday baking session. Let's just give this a little look. Uh, I can feel that catching on the bottom, which is not what I want. So I'm just going to give that a, another stir. This is actually thickening up quite quickly. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it myself rather than oh it smells like sticky toffee pudding sauce it's so good that cake has risen perfectly it is about five mil a centimeter from the top of the cake pan so it was a good call from my half if we had put that extra in we'd probably be seeing it overflowing by now but that extra is in a little pudding dish so there's a little extra sticky toffee cake pudding going on in there and that's got a really lovely dome to it as well so they're doing really well over there in the oven this sticky toffee sauce is doing really well on the hob as well it is this beautiful sticky toffee color it's thickening up. It's not quite a hundred percent where I want it to be. It's still like you see a little bit runny. So I'm going to pop that back on the heat. Remember, this is a medium. Well, this is actually now a low heat because we only want this to simmer. We don't want it to boil or anything. So let's give that a stir. And having actually taken that off the heat, it will have started to cool quite rapidly. So that's where we've got to. We've got sticky toffee sauce on the hob. We've got cakes in the oven. Fingers crossed, everything goes to plan. Um, what happens then with the bunt when it's cooked? Uh, so that's about 40 to 45 minutes. When it's cooked, now we made sure that we really gave our pan a good coat of cake release. But once it comes out the oven, you need to get it out of the pan quickly. But... You don't want to take it out straight away. If you try and turn that out straight away, it's still really soft and it's going to break up. Um, you could end up with probably the top still in the pan and the bottom comes out um, because it hasn't started to cool and shrink away from the sides. And that shrinking away from the sides is why we've got that cake release in there. It's so important because that helps the cake 
just pull away from the sides of the tin, which means when we turn it out, it's really easy to do so. However, you don't want to leave it in the pan too long because the reverse will happen is that even though it cools and it shrinks away from the size of the pan, it will start to then just weld itself in there and it's a lot harder. That central core, it's a lot harder for it to get out. So your optimum time is about 10 to 15 minutes of cooling in the pan, then turn out onto a wire cooling rack and leave it to fully cool just normally. So it's really key with your bump pans, with your bunk cakes that you do that. And I list all those details in the blog posts uh, when we do bunk, bunk cakes. So once I've got the full recipe up for this, you guys will have every single bit of information you'll need to make the perfect bunt cake. And the sun's come back out. I've just seen it. We've talked about it being a grey, dull Cotswolds day, but I can see glimpses of blue sky and the sun is just back out. So that's our start of our sunny autumn. Right. Our caramel sauce. Probably... I don't want to cook it too much. If you cook this too much, what will happen is it will become bitter. And we don't want a bitter caramel sauce. We want a really sweet, rich toffee. And from here now, what you can see is it's nice and thick. It's coating the back of my spatula. It's running. We don't want it thick so it doesn't run. We want, when we pour it over the top of our cake, we want it to run down all those lovely decorative crevices and, and, and the pattern on the cake. So this now, can you see that? It's so shiny and silky and I want to eat it, but this is sugar, butter, cream. It's going to be very hot. So don't do anything there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab our bowl. I'm just going to put this on a hot trivet because it's going to be hot as it comes out. Can you see that? It. Oh, that's perfect. The cake better be perfect now. Otherwise, I'm going to have to make another one. <laughs> Uh, but with all my recipes, they are tried and tested. So these are everything I do. So you know that when you give it a go yourself, it will, if you follow the instructions, they are really easy. If you follow the instructions, you know, you'll get the perfect bake. And what you'll find, let's make sure I turn the hob off. What you'll find on the blog as well is I will always link out to this, but you'll find a step-by-step -step recipe. So you've got the recipe cards, but you'll also have in the full blog post the full details of the step-by-step -step recipe with all the top hints and the tips and everything. So it's really worth reading the blog post because that's where all the, the juiciness is. There's no details about family holidays or anything like that. So you don't have to read about uh, my life. I tell you that here. <laughs> uh, and of course, I'll link to the video. So what I need this to do is I need it to cool. It is very hot. Um, I don't want a skin to form on it. So like you would do with a custard or a chocolate sauce, I've just got some kitchen uh, clim film, kitchen wrap, and I'm just popping that in and making sure it's very hot that is it's on the surface of our toffee sauce and then that now will just sit and cool until it's ready to be poured over and you can if you need to if it sets a bit if you find it's a bit too thick you can pop it in the microwave for a few moments to uh, reheat let's just pop that Let's get rid of some of those. Okay. Hey, we've got good time today. Good time today. This has actually got a minute 40, 
five to go. So I can see that the little one, so this has been in for 20 minutes then. So the little one, oh, you can't see me. <laughs> it's got a minute um, to go, a uh, minute and a half. So I'm going to check this before we go and wrap up. But I can see that the cake has risen really nice. I can see that it's going to be lovely and moist. Uh, the little one as well has got a really nice dome on it. But what I don't want to do is take things out just yet. But the little one, I just need to test because it might be ready to come out because remember that's in that shallower dish and just like any normal cake testing you want to be testing to see if it's done normally you do this with a skewer or a cocktail stick um, but I know these are going to be quite uh that's quite because you've got the dates and everything in there and it's sticky if I try and do that I am going to get stickiness on it so I'm going to go with the sponge test so I'm just going to top touch the top surface of the pudding with my fingers um, and see what happens. If they, I feel a slight with like springing resistance, then it's ready. If I feel that it's too spongy and I leave an indent, then it's not ready um, and needs a little bit longer. So this has got 18 seconds on it. So we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna stop that there. Actually, what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna whack the time back up to 25 so that's our 45 minutes um that's still not quite ready so that's 25 minutes in there what i'm gonna do though is i'm gonna check my watch two minutes past 11 in in another 10 minutes i'm gonna check i'm gonna check that little one because it was it was springy, but it was still a bit squidgy, so it's not quite right for me yet. So I'm going to give it 10 minutes, by which time I'll have wrapped up for you guys. Right then, talking of wrapping up, what have we been doing? So we've been making a sticky toffee pudding cake. I have all this information about sticky toffee puddings, to be quite honest, because for me, it's uh, always been a really classic British dessert. You know, you've got jam roly-poly, bread and butter pudding, sticky toffee pudding, like the, the trinity of Brit classic British desserts. And actually, I've always thought that it's from the Lake District. Um, Ian's family are from Cumbria as well. And actually, nobody knows where sticky toffee pudding hails from. There is a, a tiny village called Cartmel, um, and they sort of champ have become champions of the sticky toffee pudding. You can buy Cartmel sticky toffee pudding in some supermarkets. They have sold, since they started making them, over 10 million puddings since 1984. They sell about 1,000 a day. But they do not claim to have invented sticky toffee pudding they just champion it and it is amazing sticky toffee pudding i know you can get it on a cardo here in the uk there's also so they started in the 80s but also up in the lakes you've got also water there was a hotel and they had it on the menu in the 1970s so there's this thought that it sort of hails from there however there's also discussions that it hails from lancashire where from pre-1970, where two Canadian World War II Air Force officers were stationed and they, the person that they were, where they were staying, they uh, shared with them a recipe for a very similar pudding. Um, but it's not that dark sort of colour that we associate with sticky toffee pudding. So it could come from there. There's a whole load of origins around it. There's a whole load of origins around why it comes from Cumbria, that it's to do with the, the sugar, which was actually illegally smuggled into uh, the docks on the Solway Firth, but also where the dates came in as well. But if you want to find out more about that and all the bits and pieces, then you're best to educate yourself because there's quite a lot of uh, information out there and especially around things like the um, import um, markets, which obviously we know may have connotations. So if you want to educate yourself, then there's loads of resources out on the internet. Um, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm 
still not 100% sure. So I'm not going to educate anybody on those. But that is sort of the origins somewhere in the north of England, somewhere between Cumbria and Lancashire, where this has come from. My granny, who is Lancashire, well, was Lancashire, she'd probably sort of go for that side of things. And Ian's family, who are from the Lake District, will go for that side of things. <laughs> Make your own decisions. What I do know, though, is it's one of my favourites. And if it's on the menu, there's very little that is going to get me sort of away from that. If the sticky toffee on the menu, on the dessert menu, that's where I'm going. So we've got our cakes then. Um, and we've made these as a bundt cake. Uh, so that's the, the ring cake, as you can see here. This is actually the Biscoff one that I did because um, I didn't get any pictures of these when I was testing. <laughs> um, but you can make it as a larger layer cake if you want or a single layer cake and then have lots of lovely drizzle over the top and maybe a caramel buttercream or something like that. But I'm just going for a classic cake and toffee sauce here. And we have just made that really, uh, why is it gone? It's over there behind me. Uh, easy, toff sticky toffee sauce to drizzle over the top. It's quick. It's easy. There's no creaming of the butter and the sugar. We've used melted butter. We whisked the eggs. I mean, you saw how easy it was, and we made it in one bowl. Um, and it's perfect for autumn afternoons, especially as Tuesday is the first day of autumn. It's the first week of Bake Off, so... Grab this recipe, you can grab it from here. I will be posting it up and make yourself a slice of cake for when that famous tent starts appearing on our screens again. Yes, can't wait. Ingredients wise, let's have a quick run through. Come on. Um, for the cake, it does look like there's a lot, but don't panic. They're all, it's all sort of nice and easy. For the cake, we've used a little bit of unsalted butter and we melted that before we used it. And for this one, I've also used self-raising flour, uh, which already has our raising agents included, but you can use uh, plain flour and add extra baking powder as well. And I will detail that in the recipe on the blog. We've used pitted dates, which we've then chopped up. We've soaked them in that black tea to activate all the sugars and that stickiness in there, and they're baking away as we speak. <laughs> and we've used muscovado sugar. We've used a split uh, of 100 grams of dark muscovado. That's this one here, and a light muscovado. And that just gives it that really rich, deep flavor, that toffiness, and just brings everything together. That that really lovely flavor. And we've just used a touch of golden syrup and that's just to bring a little white sugar into the, uh, into the mix, but just in a syrupy form as well. Two medium eggs, remember as always, they should be at room temperature, makes them so much easier to work with. We've used a pinch of baking soda, don't forget our raising agents were in our flour, but a pinch of baking soda just to help stabilize everything because it's a wet mixture, and a little bit of mixed spice to add a little something extra in there as well. And a, and a, a glug, a dash, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. For our sticky toffee sauce that we just made, again, really simple, four ingredients, pop them all in the saucepan, simmer it, melt them all together and simmer it until it's nice and thick and glossy and shiny. And for that, we used a bit of double cream. You can use heavy cream. It's got to be double though or heavy or whipping cream because it's that fat content that gives us our sauce. Single cream just won't work. Uh, a little bit of unsalted butter. That's 15 grams, not 15 Gun salted butter uh, and 40 grams again of our muscovado sugar. We've used the dark one for a really thick, dark, rich color to our toffee sauce and a little bit of golden syrup. So there we go. Um, that's our ingredients. I'm just gonna actually because that's nearly our 10 minutes up. So before we um before we switch off, I'm just gonna check that uh what did I do with Anna over there? I'm just going to check the single one, the one that we had uh, left over. Yes. And I'm going to 
leave the cake itself in there. That's not the cool down. So it's got about 15 minutes left to go on it. But this is our little one. See now, you see what I mean by a spring test? When I push down, it springs back up. There's a little bit of resistance, but it's soft and squidgy. And if I grab my skewer, if I, it comes out lovely and clean. Gonna keep that because I'm gonna need it for later. But what I want to do is what you could do is you can make these as individual ones, but you want to make it as proper as a, as a dessert, as a pudding, not as a uh, cake. But I should have kept that because it's going to be it's going to be hot, isn't it? Yes, that's my hand tea towel. Then just want to have a look. I'm going to take the top off this. Ian's out on a bike ride, so he can have this when he gets back with some of that toffee sauce. But. Oh, my word. It smells amazing. It's just, you see this, you've got the little bits of, there's some dates in there I can see, and the sponge. I just need to, talking of the Lake District, these are herdy oven gloves. They, they I love them. These are just sort of where burnt things on the sides. But herdy is a Lake Lund company uh they've got sheep and stuff but they have these really cool little sheep we've got them everywhere um i have mugs as well and my my one of my new colleagues when we're on a meeting she was like oh my god you've got a herdy mug i've got so many um i wanted just to spin that round so you could oops i dropped a little bit oh i've dropped it again you could see in there I can smell that little bit of mixed spice as well. And it's just, oh, it smells so good. But what you could do with this is you could just take the top off like this, pour the sauce on and maybe a big blob of um, vanilla ice cream would be perfect. It's probably cake, cake, fresh cake like this is still needs to finish cooking. It's a bit stodgy. Um, it's a bit too warm still in in doesn't like warm cake but what i'm gonna do i can taste the date the sweetness that treacliness from the muscovado sugars and getting all that sort of the melted butter in there so it's not dense it's really light i can have that tiny hint of mixed spice in there as well he's not getting that when he gets back and it's, it's still warm sticky toffee pudding you'd normally sort of it wouldn't be hot hot it'd be slightly warm but this, it smells, it smells amazing. And taste it as well. So that's just the little one, and the big one is still in there. Fingers crossed, it's got about 13 minutes. And remember, when it comes out, it just needs to cool in the tin for 10 to 15 minutes before you turn it out, so you don't break that bun up. But that, even the off, the, 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 the extras, in a little thing. Oh, look, see, I'm going in. Mm. Move it away from me. <laughs> that just needs a dollop of ice cream in the middle. Some whipped cream or some custard and that, that toffee sauce and it's perfect. Mm, my life. You need to make this for Bake Off for Tuesday. Um, totally. Actually... We might actually have to find out. Might pop up on the Facebook page what you guys are baking and having for your Bake Off treats. Um, it's sort of a little bit of tradition. <laughs> right. We've run through the recipe. We've run through the ingredients again. It was really super easy. You guys have seen the cake. It's in the oven. You've seen the little one that's just come out that I'm going to try and not eat all of it. 
Um, but there's not much else for me to say except um, happy, happy autumn, happy Bake Off, happy Strictly if you're a Strictly fan because that started last night and we've got the amazing John Waite who is uh, part of the first all-male partner group but um, uh, also is winner of the third series of Bake Off. So we love John. Good luck. We're rooting for you. Um, hoping to catch a glimpse of Emma Thompson as well at some point, if because uh, Greg Wise is participating as well. But it's really good. So it does feel that we're on the countdown to that time of year. <laughs> We've got so many baking opportunities coming up. So don't forget, if you want to, you can subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button on YouTube and tell you next time I go live or hit the like button on Facebook as well. But next week, uh, we will be making uh, we'll be making cookies, but we're going to be sandwiching them together so we get these really big, chunky cookies. And I'm not sure what flavour we're going to do yet. I'm going to put it out to you guys, put it out to the vote again. I'm thinking we might go autumn, autumnal again and with like an oatmeal and a raisin cookie sandwich, uh, sandwich together. But we'll have a think about it, see what you guys think. However... In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me on this, what is now a sunny blue sky Sunday here in the Coxwells. I hope everybody is safe and well, wherever you are, look after yourself, look after each other, and I shall see you very soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you.